So let's go back and see what happens to these stars after the RR Lyrae stage. But first, we should probably address the title of this section, since these are variable stars after all, because they're unstable. So maybe it's the instability that we should focus on. So we left these stars at the stage of helium core fusion surrounded by a shell of hydrogen fusion. After the RR Lyrae stage, the star again finally reaches a new state of hydrostatic equilibrium. Turns out it does find a balance after all. This becomes the star's second and brighter red giant stage. Eventually, all of the helium in the core will be used up in creating carbon, and the core will start to fill up with that newly produced carbon. At this point, hydrostatic equilibrium is lost again, so the star collapses, and its temperature increases as a result. However, there just isn't enough mass in what was originally a medium mass star to raise the pressure and temperature high enough to ignite carbon fusion in the core. However, temperatures do rise enough for fusion to begin in the newly formed helium shell surrounding that carbon core. So to reiterate, we have an inert carbon core that's dormant and experiences no fusion, surrounded by a shell of helium fusion, which is in turn surrounded by a shell of hydrogen fusion. The rest of the star's unused hydrogen remains in the extended stellar envelope. But now comes the time for these stars to begin bowing out. The death of a medium mass star starts with a very, very hot carbon oxygen cinder in the core surrounded by individual shells of helium and hydrogen fusion going outwards from the core. And finally, an extended envelope of hydrogen. At this point, the extended envelope is likely over one astronomical unit in radius. In other words, it's huge. If this was our sun, it would have engulfed the Earth by now. At this stage, the star has evolved into a red supergiant. Over time, strong stellar winds eject the star's outer layers into space like an expanding, bursting bubble. As the gases expand away and are shed by the star, that very, very hot carbon-oxygen core, which is considered a white dwarf, is exposed. The core's UV radiation, corresponding to its high temperature, ionizes the surrounding bubble of expanding gas. This glowing emission bubble is called a planetary nebula. Ironically enough, though, it's not a planet, despite the name, nor is it involved in becoming or creating planets. The story goes that the 18th century British-German astronomer extraordinaire William Herschel observed one such planetary nebula and hypothesized that it could be related to planetary or solar system formation. But as it turns out, he couldn't have been more wrong, since he was observing the death of a star, not its birth. Now, simple animations aside, this is how the stage of stellar death would look in reality. V838 Monocerotis is a spectacular example of stellar death in action. 21st century astronomers were lucky enough to witness the start of this stage of stellar evolution, as this star began evolving drastically before our very own eyes. Observations in 2002 of the constellation Monoceros led to the discovery of a previously unremarkable, otherwise normal star in the constellation, now having appeared significantly brighter than it was before. Closer observation revealed that the sudden brightening of the star was due to the shedding of its outermost layers of gas as it entered this late stage of evolution. Other examples of more static planetary nebulae include the Helix Nebula, which is located around 650 light-years away and happens to be about 3 light-years across. Or the Cat's Eye Nebula, located just over 3,000 light-years away, whose concentric rings of expanding gases can be seen pulsating around the central star. Astronomers have calculated each ring to have been ejected from the central star's outer layers in increments of about 1,500 years or NGC 2440, described by William Herschel himself in 1790 as a beautiful planetary nebula of a considerable degree of brightness, though not very well defined. And last but not least, the crown jewel, in my opinion, of these planetary nebulae, the Clown Face Nebula. This one in particular goes by several names, all of which fit its appearance, though some of those names might now be a bit outdated. Now, riddle me this. 
if at the very center of these planetary nebulae are these carbon-oxygen embers, the remnants of these stars that once were, where they're cooling under immense pressure, what are the chances they'll eventually evolve into diamond stars? Allegedly, one already exists, theoretically, in the constellation Centaurus that astronomers have dubbed Lucy after the Beatles song. Generally, though, it's a white dwarf. So if we were to track the changes in the physical characteristics of a star like the sun as it evolves, we'll see the star transition to shell hydrogen fusion after its inert core shrinks when core fusion pauses and the outer layers begin to expand. As they expand, luminosity increases and surface temperature decreases, so the star moves up and to the right on the HR diagram along the red giant branch. Soon after, core helium fusion begins with the helium flash, after which the star begins to emit light through shell hydrogen fusion and core helium fusion. The core expands and the outer layers shrink. As a result, luminosity now decreases a little bit and surface temperature increases, so the star moves down and to the left on the HR diagram into the horizontal branch. Eventually, all of the core helium is used up and now the star shines by shell hydrogen fusion and shell helium fusion. The carbon core shrinks while the outer layers begin expanding again, and this expansion results in the increase in the star's luminosity and a decrease in surface temperature, so it moves up and to the right yet again on the HR diagram, now moving into what's called the asymptotic giant branch, where stars becoming supergiants tend to go. Eventually, the star sheds its outer layers, forming a planetary nebula that surrounds that exposed core. We can watch this again in action by observing the post-main sequence evolution of our Sun as it enters its latter stages of life. With this final image, a table summarizing the stages of post-main sequence evolution for the Sun and stars like the Sun. You can find information about the energy production, spectral type, mass, surface temperatures, physical size, core temperatures, and expected lifetimes for each of these stages in their respective columns. Pause the video to examine this table to your heart's content, or just move on to the next one and come back to this later. It's completely up to you.